Hello, I'm back. Um, yeah, it's been a very long time um, because different things have happened. Um, I guess uh, life gets in the way. Um, and the last uh, session I had the chance to record was back in September 2019, last year, which is a little bit more than I was expecting. Um, I've been thinking about this. I was thinking, I don't know, maybe, you know, this was an experiment. The experiment is over, which is fine. Um, if I don't have uh, time to record these sessions, uh, maybe well, that's it. I mean, I'm still uh, making games. Um, I think since the last uh, session that um, I was still finishing uh, Uchis and Gamma, uh, and that game has been released. And uh, since then, I have released um, another CPC game, uh, Kitsune's Curse. Um, so I've been making games. I'm still doing uh, what I do. It's just that I don't have time to actually get, you know, this uh, quiet uh, set up the camera, microphone, and do something with it. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I have less time now, um, you know, because current uh, general situation. But just before that, I already had le less time. Um, um, so, yeah, I have short sessions, but definitely when I'm recording something, it takes way too long. So, so what I'm going to do today is just a little bit of catch up. Um, you know, explaining why I'm not recording these videos. Um, I don't think I have a huge following on YouTube. Um, I know that some people are watching them. Um, some videos have like around 200 views. So I guess some people are watching them. Um, I get that this is not for everyone. Um, and at the end of the day, this was just a side effect or a, a byproduct of uh, me making the games. Uh, uh, I have better connection now to the internet, so potentially I could be doing a streaming, but again, that's very difficult, um, especially if I don't have the quiet time because I could be, you know, working on a game and, you know, children could be around here and my sons or my wife, whatever, I don't know. Um, getting the quiet space and myself to, for myself so I can actually record the video is way more complicated than that. Um, so, um, as I mentioned, I released uh, Uchis and Gamma, uh, and I think it's, it's great. People like the game, and the physical copies uh, have been sold by, um, by Repro Factory. And, I mean, it's not a big deal, but, you know, people are buying them, so it means that people like the game, and they want to pay the, play the game, uh, and, you know, having... A cartridge uh, is always nice uh, to do that if you want to play in in the real hardware. Um, and after that, I finished with uh, Kitsune's Curse. That is a game I I started in 2017, and it was all about um, making a better um, engine uh, than the one I I was using at that moment uh, until that point, um, just to do a better. Uh, Golden Tail because this is a sequ sequel of, of of Golden Tail and when I finished Magicka I was thinking well there must be a way of doing this differently and I started working on the engine but then I got distracted and um, since, since then I released um, Dawn of Kernel that I was using that engine and also a couple of MSX games so yeah I mean I'm happy uh, to finally release the sequel to Golden Tail and have that game out um, because uh, yeah it's very unlikely that I'm going to do that again or often because I'd rather start a, a new story um, a new game a new mechanic and not being uh, myself forced to continue with some established mechanic or a story um, which makes things harder to be honest um, because yeah I mean it had to be the same uh, mechanic without being the same game again um, so you know it makes things harder um, and after that well um, 
Yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, this project I'm working on at the moment, although this is going to be association and I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to code. So this may not be me coding, um, but I think it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> we might have another session like this one, maybe, and, and that will include some coding. It depends on, on availability. Um, so what happened with this is, um, yeah, so I released two MSX games. Um, the first one is because I wanted to make an MSX game. Uh, and the second one was because I was playing with one idea and, and I was trying to get uh, uh, some smooth scrolling on MSX without hardware support for that. And, you know, it's a shooter and, well, it turns out I, I managed to do it and the game is fine or whatever is done. And, and then at that point, people were saying, oh, yeah, next thing, can you make an MSX, MSX2 game? And I was thinking, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I don't have an M6 to, to start with. And although it's not a requirement to make games, right? You you can do it just with an emulator as long as you have people to help you testing afterwards. And I thought, yeah, but I don't know. Um, I, I like testing with the real hardware every now and then and not having the machine is kind of limiting. Uh, and at some point, you know, people keep saying you should be making a game for MSX2. And someone said that on Twitter and say, yeah, a lot of people talking, but I don't see anyone sending me an, an MSX2. And turns out someone sent me an MSX2. Uh, so I have an MSX2 now. Um, actually, I can actually show you the machine because I have it, have it here. Although it's not really ready to use uh, because uh, it's a it's a Japanese model um, very nice uh, and it's actually it's a Japanese model uh, so I have a PCU that's been adapted already but this thing here I need to do I need to do something about it because I can't really have this outside and the way it is especially having children around. <laughs> so this is the machine and it's very nice. I really like it. I mean, the keyboard is not as nice as the, uh, it's not as nice as uh, the keyboard of the, of the uh, hit bit I have, which is also present by the way. Um, and, um, but it's, I think it's lovely. And it's going to be very useful making this game. Um, actually, I bought uh, an MSX at Toshiba myself, but then because I have the other model uh, that is working anyway, and and this one was in the mail, I just gave it away. So there was someone that was interested, and I just I just sent him the MSX. Um, so basically, um, yeah, now looks like I might need to make a MSX2 game because, you know, that would be the nice thing to do in this case. Um, so what I've been doing so far, um, and let's take a look to it, uh, is, well, I have, um, I have a library uh, to make MSX, MSX games. Um, which is the library that I've been building and eventually I promise I will release. Uh, not sure how, but yeah, because I've been writing documentation. Uh, I think most of it is documented now, but people really need in this library and that could actually benefit from it. There's a still a learning curve. There's a lot of things you need to do. So it may not be that useful at the end because the people that know how to use uh, all the tools and configure everything and get everything working anyway, they may not need the, the library. So I'm a little bit conflicted with that. So i be just writing documentation. I may have some very simple example and just maybe just release that without support probably because um, I can't really spend time maintaining or you know adding functionality if people ask for it uh, because otherwise I wouldn't be making games. So I can do one thing at a time really. So that library, I've been improving and changing something so it supports uh, MSX2. So what are the difference? 
what is what are the differences so far? Well, um, let's take a look to the to the well the documentation, which is not documentation. It's basically the, there is an include file, and I've been writing documentation in here, and I can generate a nice uh, HTML PDF or whatever from this file using uh, Pandoc. I think I was using. Uh, don't remember right now, but the whole idea is, you know, I've been adding uh, some MSX2 stuff, uh, which is, for example, this one, which is the first the first difference we're going to see here. Um, 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 that basically, uh, what I'm doing is I'm using a, a graphic mode on MSX2 that is a screen for that is similar to a screen two that I was using on the MSX one. The only difference is that you can have, you can define your own palette in a tricky format, I guess, uh, but it's not too complicated. Uh, you can actually have, uh, you know, make some automatic conversions. So, you know, what I like is usually, um, I like uh, use available tools, like I use GIMP, for example, uh, for the graphics. And then what I do is I generate a PNG, and what I like is to uh, make a um, to write a tool. Uh, these tools actually I release uh, as open source, so they are available already. Uh, but in this case, this is a specific version for MSX2. Uh, yeah, they're corporately sold and stuff. But, uh, because if the MSX1, uh, I was using the the palette from the Toshiba. Uh, um, machines with this uh, RGB colors. So when you draw things in GIMP, then the this script is going to verify that you're using the right colors, and you know it has to perform some checks that, with the restrictions that you have in the in the graphic mode, etc. So it's doing a lot of stuff for you. And uh, now it supports a palette, so a palette which is basically a JSON file uh, where. that has the colors, right? So what I did is I went to to GIMP here. And in GIMP, what I did is I defined a palette I like. Um, so currently there are three tiles and a font, there's nothing. This is the tile set I'm using. Um, so I define a palette here. And then you can export that into a file and you can process that to generate that JSON object. Uh, and with that JSON object, you can use uh, a script to generate the actual palette that you're going to use. But I think uh, this is, so this is the palette I, I'm using at the moment. This is a little bit dirty because it's just, I'm still, it's not ready to release and people use, but. Basically, uh, with this formula here, you multiply by seven and divide by 255, you convert that to the um, to the RGB values expected, um, which is basically, I think is four bits per color. Um, if I remember correctly by looking at this. Um, so basically this converts the what we have in that palette in GIMP into something that is going to look uh, pretty close in uh, on the MSX2. So that's the first change. So we now uh, we have a palette. Um, the MSX uh, the uh, screen four has other differences. Uh, the uh, sprites work different because now you can have uh, instead of four sprites in the line, you can have uh, eight. And also you can have multiple colors per line in a sprite. So the memory layout is different. Uh, I'm not going to go too much in detail with that because that's information that is really available. But yeah, so that's the difference. And on top of that, you can enable one functionality that will allow you to do a or an or between uh, two sprites. So you get a third color having two sprites. So in this case, looking at uh, the this player character here, um, so it basically has two colors, which is yellow and blue. And because of the order of the colors in the palette, when I do an or, no, sorry, that's not how it works. So I think I have black and blue 
And when I do all of these two sprites, they merge and you get the jello for the face, the hands and the boots. And actually going back to, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's quite, it's not too, too complicated. I, I was surprised that it was so easy to do, but looking at the character here. So what I do is I get the palette, then uh, the transparent color is not completely black, so I can tell the difference. Although uh, you're not going to see that in, on the MSX because it will be transparent. So basically, uh, I draw normally limiting myself to three colors and, and the transparent color. And then in the tool, I'm going to tell which are the the color the colors I want to use, and it will use them to you know to get the or which is uh, the third color. So I'm I'm saying I'm going to use one that is black. And, and this one that is no in blue is this blue yeah this blue which is uh 13 and then which which is not true because i rearranged the uh yeah it's complicated but basically i have them in this order here because it's nicer for me to draw but in practice uh the palette the colors have been arranged because um for the MSX2 is whatever I, I data I generate from the PNG. So um, I have that Python tool that is actually converting things to work in the in the way that it sh they should. So yeah, I just tell the colors whatever they are, which is uh, let me see. So I'm saying, please, can you do or of colors one and two, uh, one and two which is uh, one and two are looking at my palette. Uh, so one and two is zero and thir three one blah, blah, blah. And that three one a two is it is three one a two has to be this one. Yeah, three one a two, right? So that's the blue, um, right? So it will do the art for us. Which is handy. I don't know. I, I, I'm, it's very lucky that I'm going to release also a new update of the tools because it's, they support the, the exact same MSX uh, one stuff that I already released. Um, I, they just add some extra functionality for um, for MSX two. So yeah. So that was one thing. The palette. Uh, sorry, the palette and the other thing that I was talking about right now is the sprites. They work slightly different and. And the other thing that you have here is um, is hardware support for a vertical scroll. So that's what I implemented here, which is what we're looking at now. So that's basically it. It has. So what we have is um, let's close this one. So what we have here is. Um, Six H. Let's take a look through that. Did it close? No, it didn't. So, so we have a function that is set display offset, and you can basically shift the complete screen, uh, which is not ideal to be honest. Uh, it's shifting the complete screen. Um, so basically what you are doing is, but it's not just the, the visible part. So the lines that you see uh, are, it's also shifting the border. So that means that when you're doing that shifting, um, you need to take into account that, you know, the tile sets uh, on the MSX are divided in three banks, which is not actually true. It turns out there are four banks um, on MSX does, MSX2, sorry, which is, the fourth bank goes into the border because we are like doing like some sort of like a little bit of overscan. And um, we need to provide um, that fourth bank. So we draw the right tile and the right colors when we go down. And this, this display adjust. <coughs> Excuse me. This um, display adjusts here. It's a different thing. It's still move the adjustment, but it's not. It's not the same thing, right? So, in order to do this, um, then I had to 
to rearrange where things go in memory. And and because the library I had was for for MSX one, basically I have now some configuration. These are the defaults on on MSX one screen two, and then I think I believe this is screen two or it was a screen four. I don't remember right now. And then you can configure to use four banks and you can move things around uh, based on um, on on configuration that you can set here uh, right in the register. So basically the tail map, I move it to zero, the tail patterns to 4,000 and, and the tail course to 6,000. Because with the default layout, um, they basically, you don't have a space for a fourth uh, bank anyway. So that's done. Uh, and then the next thing, <laughs> because there are more things, is that um, in order to um, to get, yeah, because it's scrolling the complete screen. Um, so, and, and this is uh, a, a tile map base uh, graphic mode. So it means that when you are, you do the scrolling, you add one line, you're going to add eight pixels. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm, is I'm drawing one extra line and that extra line is hidden uh, under the border. So that's why you see that transition to be smooth. Um, and on the top, uh, you, you are going to have also, uh, we, I mean, it's a complete screen moving, so it means that the hard line here is going to move to, and we want that to be uh, fixed on that position. And we also need to do some clipping because, see, I mean, I'm clipping this last line, half of it. So when it appears and goes away, you don't see it happening at chunks of eight bytes, eight bits, sorry, eight pixels. Um, so yeah, eight pixels. Um, so in order to do that, you have to do a lot of fiddling with interrupts. So now I added a new uh, interrupt handler um, that is quite, well, it's not too complicated, but it was hard to get right because I like to use the BIOS uh, when I'm making MSX games. And I think the BIOS was kind of interfering with some stuff. Um, with some stuff I was doing here. Um, anyway, so I added this new interrupt that, you know, it will be available when the when the library is available. But what it's, do, what it's doing basically is you can set up, um, let's take a look to them again. So you can set up um, on top of the usual in, uh, interrupt that you get when v, uh, vsync happens, usually around here at the bottom. So you had you get an interrupt when you get at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the screen. Um, now you can configure the MSX to to generate another interrupt in one specific line. So basically, what I'm doing is in zero. Uh, I think I believe there are different ways of doing this, but um, for timing and and accuracy, I think this is probably the easiest way. And it turns out after kind of getting myself around the idea and managed to do it. I was having a chat with Sandy Ondañon and he's doing the same thing in one of his ga games. So so this is not completely crazy. It looks like it's probably a good way of doing it. Um, so basically when you get uh, on vSync, you set the rest of the offset of the screen to be zero. So this is the line on zero. And then you restore the offset based on your camera uh, when you are past a line, in this case, I don't know which line is, I uh, don't remember right now, but it's, uh, you can see that it's line line eight here, see? Um, and then you set the offset of your camera in the scroll. Uh, and also thanks to the overlap, then you, you get that transition smooth without seeing one line of pixels appearing and disappear, you know, disappearing. Um, sorry, line of pixels. It's just one line of character, so it's eight pixels. Um, so yeah, that was very tricky. But I think uh, with this, uh, pretty much, those are the difference with MSX2. Um, 
I think I could be doing more stuff, but I think for the type of game I want to implement, uh, this is pretty much uh, the idea. I also was fiddling with the camera. I wanted to make the camera because I don't like when the camera is completely fixed to the character. So for example, if you're here and you're jumping, uh, I don't want, I don't like those games where the camera is shaking when you move up and down. Um, so the camera, although it's fixed uh, at one specific speed, is always striking. And you know, it is kind of pinned to the, to the, to the player character, but it's not, it's not fixed, so it's tracking. And so in this case, because uh, there are like, uh, like oh, I'll point it to the screen, there are two lines, one line here and another line here. So basically you're between those lines, it's not actually updating the camera, but it's moving up to a constant speed and it's not the speed of the character. So basically when I jump, the camera gets there a little bit later, but it's smooth, I, I don't know. Um, there are lots of way of, of lots lots of ways of priming the camera and I think uh this one is kind of okay. I like it. You avoid, you know, being on a on a part of the action and the camera shaking when you are not really moving, you know, uh vertically. So that seems to be done too. Um yeah, so that's pretty much where we are at the moment. Um I believe there are a lot of things I might need to change because um, I was aiming at the minimal change. Uh, well, all the logic of uh, all the camera is here. So, so basically, um, so so I have few. I mean, I have a lot of constants here, but. Uh, one, um, so tile white, tile height, 16, yeah, okay, so this is the, yeah, okay, so I have a, a different set of constraints here, so, uh, so my map in, in, in tile, which is the tool I use for doing the maps, uh, let me start that, although, yeah, it didn't work. Let me see if I can fix this very quickly. Let's get out of the way. Do, 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 do. Where is in data maps? Yeah, I have a problem with tile and I'm not sure what to do about it, but it's kind of, it's kind of breaking my It's kind of breaking because it's adding this and then when I start tile it's not able to find the file so I'm not sure why because it's in the same directory so this is and I have changed that but then when you save it seems to be putting that back again I'm not sure if it's a bug or what's, what was going on but right so let me see, that should be, now we should be able to see tile. Yeah, it works. Surprise. I mean, I haven't changed any configurations since the last time. Anyway, so this is, um, this is the actual map. So the map, uh, the, my tiles are, um, are 16 per eight, which is uh, the value we can see here. 16 per 8 and then I have the complete map is 16 uh, wide and 44 so it's basically currently well it was supposed to be twice the map I used for example in uh, night night but because of the viewport and the scrolling I'm still adjusting I'm using 23 but 16 per 44 which is actually what we see here and um, and uh, yeah, so basically the way it works is that you define a viewport, which is the area that you're going to draw on a screen and, and you keep moving the viewport to track in the user, the, the, the game character, the player. Um, so, <clears throat> so, 
So this is the height of the viewport and and the overdrawn here, one extra button for the clipping we're doing. Uh, so you can see the ties going away smoothly instead of, you know, just a chunk of one character. Then um, I'm, I'm doing some a trick to use always a positive camera so I don't because basically what you do is when you the character is moving up or down what you are doing is um, um, every eight characters you move your whole viewport down and draw another line right which is another character eight eight pixels uh, every eight pixels. Um, uh, so with the, with this, uh, set display offset, what you can do is you can do intermediate steps between those. So every, I mean, if you're moving one pixel at a time, every eight pixels is when you scroll everything and move one character, add one character, right? Um, so I, in order to always use positive, um, my camera zero is not really zero. So I'm not moving the camera. I'm moving it up and down, but not from the from the actual zero. What I'm doing is that I start on eight, and I can move from eight to zero and from eight to sixteen, and it simplifies a, a bit the calculations. Uh, although, yeah, the camera offset is still uh, a sign uh, byte, but I'm not using the sign, so I think it's better like this. It's also to make the compiler happy because otherwise some comparison is going to say, mm, you know, that comparison may not work, but I know it does because I never get a, ne a negative value in camera offset. Um, so basically <clears throat> when we move um, the player, then uh, the player is tracking uh, his, so PY it is, yeah, see, that's, an, that's a great benefit um, because basically I can only move one. I think someone was talking about this in, on Twitter. So I only need to track the position of the character in the current viewport. So I don't need to move. Uh, I mean, if it's two screens, that's definitely more than the, the, the amount of pixels. So the, 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 amount, the number that you can, because you can only handle up to 255. Uh, uh, in one byte, but in this case, I don't need to use uh, a word, uh, two bytes, because I just need to track where I am in the viewport. So, so basically, I have this function here called uh, update camera. Then, when you provide the the y position, the y position uh, based on the viewport can update the camera and do the magic of tracking the user. Uh, yeah, and also it has to be able to modify Y because every time I add a new line, I need to, you, you basically, um, so when I'm doing the, the display offset, I'm showing some information logically on the screen and I'm tracking that logically with the uh, collision detection but the map is not really moving. So it's not really scrolling. It scrolls every eight pixels. So it is important to be able to modify the Y of the player uh, because when you add one line, the offset is going to reset uh, because you just move to the next eight pixels that you're going to move next, right? Um, it's quite simple to be honest, but you need to do it in, in advance. So, uh, and that's one of the changes I need to do because at the moment with the player, it's very easy, but when I, when I have, for example, enemies uh, or more entities moving with the scroll, um, I probably need to do two steps. Uh, at the moment I have only one function that does the update and then prepares the information and withdraw at the end. Uh, but I think, uh, that prepare information to draw will need to make will need to be at a later stage when the camera is already being updated. Otherwise, it's going to be too tricky. I mean, this is this is just this is just a hack for um, for the player and and see that it works. But 
uh, probably I can remove this uh, when I need to think about that but there's a chance that because this update camera is only going to track the player not the enemies the enemies won't be able to move the camera obviously um, and then yeah that's the main core of the idea then set the beeper basically checks to limits so you know uh, when you when the the beeper you're on the top of the map you're only going to show that part of the map and when you're at the bottom you know which is um the total of the map minus the viewport is this that's the other limit and we reset the camera to be zero which is not zero it's eight well, there you are um then drawing the map uh has its draw line um i mean this is there's a lot of this is c <laughs> look at this this is just c code and the game just move it moves beautifully so um yeah, it looks the most great and it's C. So I guess I may need to change the assembler at some point because at the moment, I mean, I don't even want to look at the code that SDCC is generated from that, but it's probably terrible. Uh, I mean, it works, but you know, that's MSX to hardware sprites and, and hardware support for scroll, right? So this one draws a line and then we have a scroll buffer up, a scroll buffer down uh, that is moving the our buffer up and down um, because we only draw one line when we need to. The rest is just, it's just copying data. And then this is the code where we dump the map that we're not using the BIOS. Uh, we're just using the uh, hardware delay here because of speed. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's quite, it's not too complicated. I will need to change that definitely because I don't think it's going to work uh, when I have. Um, it won't be able to update. Well, I maybe I'm not sure, but it's, I I suspect that it will be easier if I have two rounds, one to update and another one to actually allocate the sprites. That's something I probably I couldn't explain that in a different session uh, because I have a very fancy. <laughs> sprite manager um, which is probably overkill but uh, it makes things way easier really I mean this is just it's a C um, I mean this is the kind of stuff that you can convert to assembler and it's going to make things way make things way faster um, yeah and I think this is a good overview uh, of what, what I have been done doing with this um, project uh, I still don't know the name I still don't know really what is going to be the gameplay so I don't want to say much about it now uh, because I might change things uh, very likely uh, until I find something that is kind of what I will I would consider fun or interesting to play. Um, for now, I think I got the technical bits out of the way. Um, I may need to change some things again. It's just not the drawing of the characters. Uh, sorry, the, when we had to draw the other entities that are not the player, it's also that at the moment we have only one uh, line for the hat. Um, and I'm not sure that is going to be enough. Um, it depends on the game again, because uh, I guess uh, my first idea was to make something, uh, some quick uh, pick up and play arcade, uh, probably in the line of uh, Night Night of Magica, maybe. Um, but I don't know. In those case, in that case, uh, one uh, line for HUD is probably okay because we're going to show uh, your score the number of lives, uh, maybe high score. And if you're playing against the time, probably the time. And I think that's pretty much it. So one line can be okay, maybe. Um, but if I need to do two lines, I probably need to change a little bit things, uh, which is not too difficult. And actually, um, I, I don't know if, yeah, I mean, it's just one extra line, uh, visible lines, but Remember, I'm doing that one extra on the bottom, so I'm doing 24 lines, although you can only see 
um, 23. Uh, hmm. So I'm not sure. I may, it may be better if I just reduce one line, even if it's just providing some padding here, but I still don't know. Um, and yeah, I think this is going to be all for today. Not a lot of coding, but I just wanted to make an update to see, to tell, you know, what's going on, why I stopped uh, making these videos after a reasonable good strike, because I think I published, I think it was up to 18 videos and some of them were kind of close together. So yeah. I just wanted to say why this the videos have stopped and and I don't know I might have one of these sessions every now and then you know like today is a Saturday uh, I kind of had like 45 minutes or one hour to talk about what I'm doing um, so I might do that but yeah it's, it gets tricky if I'm adding a new functionality <laughs> and usually I don't plan things in advance, so um, I may need uh, longer if I need to explain what I'm doing and at the same time not quite sure what is what I'm doing. Um, so I don't know if it's more uh, focused and more targeted like this, like this session, uh, I might do one every now and then, but I can't really promise anything. Okay, so that's everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, you know, thumbs up or whatever. I'm not in this thing of YouTube really, uh, but um, yeah, subscribe because there could be more videos and we're working on uh, MSX2 game, which is quite interesting. So that's all I think. So bye-bye.